After the European Parliament elections, uh, the race and the dynamic leading to the next political institutional cycle has opened. In fact, it's opened uh, today on the 28th of, uh, of May. Uh, the big question really is whether the Spitzenkandidaten uh, process, uh, which uh, started last time around, meaning after the 2014 uh, European elections, is going to be replicated this time around. Uh, now, we know that on the one hand, uh, already prior to these elections, uh, there has been a pushback by some member states, notably uh, Emmanuel Macron's France, as well as Angela Merkel's Germany, against the Spitzenkandidaten process, uh, an attempt to uh, rein in and take back uh, some of the uh, control and the decisions concerning who would eventually be president of the European Commission. On the side of the European Parliament, of course, uh, the Spitzenkandidaten uh, process is still there and it is the only one uh, that uh, holds. So it's really a question of finding a balance between these two sets of forces. Now the fact that the European elections did not lead uh, to a clear winner uh, of uh, the elections, but rather there will be the necessity of a coalition between three political families, possibly four political families, all of which are on the Europeanist camp, uh, meaning the Popular uh, Party, the Social uh, Democrat party, uh, the Greens and, and the Liberals. This means that most likely it will not simply be uh, the candidate coming from one uh, of these groups that is going to eventually uh, be the president of the uh, European Commission and there on from there uh, the, not the, the appointments to the European Council, of course the governor of the central bank uh, as well as all other, the H, next HRVP as well as all the other uh, commissioners. Now uh, as to the question of what role Italy will play uh, in this game, uh, frankly speaking, I think that uh, Italy has lost big uh, from these elections, if we look at it from a European perspective, uh, simply because, uh, as I said, as the dynamic, uh, the political dynamic is really going to be between four major political families, while well, Italy's government is represented by two coalition parties, parties both of which are excluded. Uh, from this, uh, from this four-party, four-family coalition. So already in a situation in which Italy's national credibility is not particularly high uh, with this government, already in a situation in which Italy has uh, structural economic uh, problems, obviously beginning with its uh, high debt levels, if on top of it we add this uh, new form of political marginalization after the European elections, uh, then most likely uh, Italy's voice at the table is going to become weaker. Now, of course, this also happens in a context in which it would be impossible to replicate the position that Italy had uh, in the past, uh, because it would be impossible, even with an incredibly credible government and an incredibly strong economy, uh, to both uh, have a governor of a central bank, an HRVP, as well as a president uh, of the European uh, Parliament. So already this would have been an extremely difficult uh, battle to win, and of course, uh, now that Italy's position has gone down in terms of its status and its credibility, uh, the big challenge will be that of trying to achieve uh, again a commissioner that has some sort of weight within the next European Commission.